You fly? <laughs> What's so funny? A deer made fake snow and threw it all over their Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, I know. I miss you too. But it sounds like you're having a wonderful time spending Christmas with Hogan. What is so funny about fake snow? Well, she made it out of the rejected pages from Hogan's screenplay. Oh. Here, oh. You and Hogan have a very merry Christmas. Oh, I want to say goodbye. I know. I love you too. Cagney wants to say goodbye. Hey there. Yeah, I'm supposed to tell you love from Susie. Love and kisses. Yeah. Jonah's fine. They'll be here in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Look, you take care of yourself, okay? Here, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Mom. Mom. Hey. Don't feel sad. Don't be sad. I'm trying not to be. But it just doesn't feel like Christmas without the whole family together. What are you talking about the whole family? It's here. The whole McCleary clan is lined up to wish you the merriest Christmas (laughs) ever. So they are. Now, here is Susie and Jonah to complete the picture. They always put a smile on your face. Yours, too. She's home. Why is yeah. home? It's her. Ready? Yeah. Red balls with bounce of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be. <laughs> you don't look very jolly. What's the matter? incredible. Why was Kentucky flying the plane in the first place? You told me they were interviewing other pilots. Yeah, well, the guy they picked broke his leg the day before yesterday. And oh, no. Kentucky was a last-minute replacement. And Liza couldn't cancel the test? Well, she didn't want to risk another delay, Joe. The government was threatening to cancel the contract if the prototype didn't fly on schedule. Besides, the last thing anyone expected was a heart attack. I mean, Kentucky was so strong and so full of vitality. Well, we'd know a lot more if Liza were here, but she spent the whole night at the hospital last night. Yeah. I think the only time she left his bedside was to call us. I, I still don't understand. Why was Liza in the plane? I think I know. That plane was Travis's dream, and... I think Liza wanted to be up there in the heavens so she could feel close to him when that dream came true. You know Liza pretty well, don't you, honey? She's my mother. She's for real now, Joe. My adoption became final yesterday. Honey! Oh, I'm happy for you. (laughs) Thank you. Well, I couldn't think of any kind of a gift that would compare with that, but why don't you open that one and see how close it came? Oh, uh, I couldn't do that. I'd probably just hurt your feelings. Well, I'm I'm a pretty good shopper. Oh, <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. Oh, I'm sorry. I I just can't feel like Christmas unless Liza's here and we open our presents together. Dad, that is incredible. What'd you get? Look. Wow, you think he sprung for two? Very funny. (laughs) (laughs) Who says there's no Santa Claus? Oh, don't get me wrong, Dad. I love the socks. Hey, I worship this tie. Yeah, Yeah, well, those were presents just to throw you off the track. Nice guy. Yeah, good thing you have a sense of humor. So, is this it? Is this it? 
What, an 18 karat solid gold watch isn't enough? Come on, Dad, these are great, only... Only what? Well, they're not very mysterious. Am I missing something? Here? I thought we were missing something. At least that's what you led us to believe last, last night. night at Stephanie White. You oh. told us today we'd find out about our mysterious Christmas present. Yeah, fess up, Dad. No time like the present. Time will tell. Time works wonders. Uh, we, all right, all right. All right. Um, I was, I was going to talk to Liza Sintel about this before I talked to you, but... She's been in the hospital all night, and I haven't been uh, able to get in touch with her. Uh-oh. You figured it out. Time is money. So? Dad bought Liza out of Channel 6. He's our new producer at Knights of the Turntable, huh, Dad? <laughs> Family project might be interesting. What do you think, Dad? He might want to tie us up in knots. Well, maybe he'll suck it's it not to a us. joke. We wouldn't be a family again. It has nothing to do with Channel 6. I was wrong. And you were right. Your sister's alive. I found Rebecca. Ink, but these fell out of Santa's sleigh and they're all addressed to the McCleary's. You didn't have to do that. Well, it's not much. It's just a little Christmas cheer. Merry Christmas, Justine. Same to you, Kate. Come in, please. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, the house looks beautiful. And those aromas, I would guess you're cooking something wonderful in the kitchen. Baked ham with raisin sauce. Oh, don't stop there. Well, just an ordinary Christmas dinner. You McCleary's do not know how to be ordinary. I, on the other hand, have had years of experience, so don't hold it against me when you open these gifts. Well, they're not bad presents. I, uh, I don't have one for you. Oh, I'm afraid I don't either. Of course you don't. I already got my present. Knowing the McCleary's was the best gift I could possibly receive. Now, these two are for Darren Hogan. I know Santa should have mailed them, but Santa got really busy and he forgot. So would you mind doing it for him? <laughs> Not at all. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciate all that you've done for me. You took me in and you made me feel like I belonged. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me and I'm never gonna forget it. I wish I could stay longer, but um, baked ham seems to be on everybody's agenda. Mine is in Stanfordville. Now, we don't have raisin sauce, but they tell me Quince is pretty good. Oh, Quince is delicious. Um, that is exactly what my friends told me when they invited me for dinner. And they promised me a feast. Mince pie, pumpkin pie, they'll work. That reminds me, we have <laughs> some pumpkin pies cooling out in the window. I, I'm gonna go get it. Oh, please, go, go. Take care of the pies. I've got a bus that I have to catch, and the last thing I want to do is miss that bus. Justine, thank you for the present, and have a very happy holiday. I've got baked ham with quince sauce. Could I have anything else? You have a merry one, too, Kate. I really hate to rush off like this, but you understand. Yes, I do. Oh. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Are you all right? Look, let me, let me take you home so you can get some rest. No, you must no, be exhausted. No, no, Kentucky's still unconscious, and we don't know yet if he's going to pull through, so uh, the word I got at the Herald is that he had a massive heart attack. I, I am so sorry. It's my fault, you know. I'm. What is? I, uh... Kentucky never would have taken up the prototype. He did it for me, and... No, he did it because uh, Captain Duncan broke his leg and there was no one else available. No, Sonny, you don't understand, you know. The whole time, I, I kept thinking, oh, we, he really should be jumping at the chance to take this plane up. Instead, he was there just helping me interview other pilots. And then in the, in the locker room, just before the flight, there was something in his voice, um, forced quality I, I'd never heard before. I should have been more sensitive to what... He's my partner. I'll let him down. You can't read his mind. Partners are supposed to communicate. 
Well, you know, sometimes the words don't always come out. I know. I should have been more sensitive to what I saw and what I heard. If I lose him, I'm you haven't lost him yet. Now, don't you give up. Excuse me. I'm Dr. Trasky, Colonel Bluebird's cardiologist. Are either of you immediate family? Last week. Last week? And uh, no one told me until now? Well, you should be honored. We're not going to tell this to anybody else until Joe's party. You will keep our secret. <laughs> on one condition. That you take a picture of me with my future daughter-in-law. Deal. <laughs> deal here. Take oh, Joe all right. Here all right. Oh. Okay, you get around picture there. Picture time. <laughs> Welcome to the family. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you, Kate. Uh -huh. Perfect. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Have you set a date? Oh, New yeah. Year's Eve. Cagney refuses to wait until 1985. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, the camera is wonderful, but I must admit that the news of your engagement is the best Christmas present I ever had. Oh. Well, I'm still waiting for my present. What does that mean? <clears throat> Mom, get this. <coughs> oh, hmm? what do I do? <laughs> you press it right there, Mom. Right there. Oh. There you go. Well, I can't find the little thing. Okay. <laughs> My finger's on it. Great. Um, mm. I hate to interrupt, but mm. we haven't sung any Christmas carols yet. Mm. Mm. Well, Jonah, I guess it's you and me. Your mommy and your daddy want to make their own kind of music. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. You found Becca? Is she all right? Have you seen her? Yes, to all three questions. W where is she? In Henderson. I don't understand. Uh, did you bring her back here? This is incredible, but she's been here all along. Do we know her? Know her? You're like brothers to her. That's why you wanted to talk to Liza. TR is Becca. Dad? You remember when Chase brought her up on the stage in Knights of the Turntable? Sure, sure. I accompanied the two of them on the piano. You sang a French lullaby, one that I used to sing to the two of you when you were kids. So? So Dad asked me if I taught T.R. that song, and I said no, that she knew it all along. I mean, you're basing all this on a lullaby? Well, not entirely, but it got me to thinking. You see, it's not an ordinary lullaby. Your grandmother made it up. She wrote the song. Nobody outside the Kendall family knows that song. Well, it still isn't proof. Not absolute. That's why I asked Chase about T.R.'s good luck ring. The one that she made the fuss over at Thanksgiving. And when he described the stone to me, I knew it had to be the ring that I gave Rebecca on her third birthday. What was the stone? It was an opal. Well, do you have the ring? No, I've actually not even seen it. Well, how can you be sure it's the same ring? I mean, this isn't a lullaby. Opal's a common stone. Would fingerprints convince you? That phone call I, I picked up the other day, that's what that was about. Mm -hmm. well, I sent away to La Jolla, have Rebecca's fingerprints sent here, and I had them compared to T.R.'s. They're a match. <sighs> then it has to be true. Absolutely beyond any doubt. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> we have found our baby girl. But we have to tell her. <sighs> I'm afraid it's, uh, it's not quite that simple. What do you mean? Something happened yesterday that complicates matters. T.R.'s adoption? Yeah. It was finalized. Why don't I go and talk to her first? She trusts me. If I break it to her slowly, remind her how much we all love her, maybe she'll be able to accept the truth. Maybe, maybe not. The one thing I know for sure is how complicated this is and how carefully we have to handle it. T.R.'s happy about the adoption, isn't she? Ecstatic is a better word, which is not surprising. I mean, she feels safe and secure. She's with a family that she loves. And I think that there could be serious repercussions if we underestimate the importance of that. Dad, we love her too. I know that. So we have to try to understand that she still holds me responsible for Travis's death. Travis was, was her father figure. Now how do you think she's going to feel if I suddenly take her away from her newfound mother? And T.R. is our sister. We can't just stand around and do nothing. I don't intend to stand around and do nothing. But until I talk with Liza, I'm not going to proceed any further. But why didn't T.R. recognize the clan doll? I assume because she was traumatized by the kidnapping. She probably is afraid to remember anything about her childhood. Well, that's more, more of a reason why we should go talk to her. Chase. All right, Dad. I just wish her a Merry Christmas. 
Thank you. Sounds good to me. Dad, you gonna join us? I wish I could. I want to. But I think it might upset her. I'm not exactly TR's favorite person. People change, Dad. We'll send her your love, okay? Feeling pretty down. Oh. So I thought maybe you guys could go on in and cheer up. No problem. I brought the great Serrano with me. You can put a smile on her face. So Serrano. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. Cause no matter how far away you roam. If you pine for the sunshine of a friendly gaze, for the holidays you can't beat home sweet home. Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays, cause no matter how far away you roam, if you want to be happy in a million ways, you can't beat home, sweet home. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you. you. more than five minutes. There's minds. We want to know if we land. Yeah. Yes, you're safe. A baby. Not a scratch on her. Still a beauty. Thanks to you. Yeah, thanks to you. Us. <laughs> Teamwork. I, um, I spoke to the doctor. He said you were out of the woods. Oh, yeah? Well, when we out of the woods, I like the woods. So do you. Remember the stars? I remember. You sure we're not in heaven? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Christmas, Christmas present. You were my Christmas present. Uh, Want to unwrap me? <laughs> You're incorrigible. Mm. Indestructible, ma'am. Indestructible. Thank you for that. Merry Christmas, Colonel Bluebird. Holy night, the stars are brightly shining, it is the night of the dear Savior's birth. 
Come lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn Fall on your knees Oh, hear the angel voices Oh, night divine Oh, night when Christ was born O oh, night divine O oh, night, O oh, night divine Fall on your knees O oh, hear the angel voices O oh, night divine O oh, night when Christ was born O oh, night divine O oh, night Oh, night divine.